French and German cross-culture is evident in Alsace through the architecture, food and wine of this fairy tale land of castles, costumes and distinctive wines. The oldest wine in the world. A traditional family-style vineyard, a look at Alsatian Riesling, Gewürztraminer, Muscat and a touch of wine folklore and more coming up in Wine Trails of France today. You'll find Alsace in the northeast corner of France. It has a really interesting history where it's gone from Germany to France, back to Germany and French again. It is for that reason, actually, that it has a really interesting cross-culture, which includes cuisine, music, and, of course, it's wine. Here, we are very blessed to have some vineyards in this single Grand Cru called the Mamburg in Sigolsheim. Our winery is based in the heart of Alsace, in a little village called Sigolsheim, just northwest of Colmar. Here at Pierre's Bar, we are one of the oldest and most prestigious estates, and our estate produces the entire range of different Alsace grapes, including Pinot Blanc, Sylvaner, Riesling, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, Gewürztraminer, Muscat, and also sparkling wines. We produce 150,000 cases, and we do export 65% of our production. Our family history started here in 1680. Our roots are basically Swedish, and Jean Spar moved to Sigelsheim here in Alsace to start the company, so over 325 years ago. So Pierre Spar is my grandfather, who rebuilt the winery after World War II. And as a mayor of the village of Sigelsheim, he had to rebuild the village, the cellars, but also the vineyards. And that took him over 20 years. And then my uncle Charles and my dad, René, have taken over the company in the 60s. So here we are in our vineyards. This is the Grand Cru, Mamburg. It's the Gewürztraminer grapes. You can see by the darker skin, it's a red, dark red skin. Usually we pick those grapes uh, anywhere between mid and late October for the Grand Cru grapes. But during the top vintages, of course, we try to make dessert wines. And uh, when we pick those late harvest grapes, usually we wait until early November. Riesling is king of the Alsace wines. And it's a wine which is typical for gastronomy. While it has so much acidity, and it's a wine with a nice finish of mineral and nice fruit of lemon. So like you see here, we are uh, in a typical Riesling area. That's only uh, a soil with uh, lime and uh, clay and chalk. And uh, if you are looking about the soil, that's the true uh, kind of soil we need for the Riesling, you see? You can smell it. And test now some berry over here. And you will feel the communion of the soil going to the grapes. It's time to uh, test the grapes and to see what is the quality of this. This Gewürztraminer is aging in uh, old oak barrels. Uh, old oak don't give oak smell to the wine. He's aging on the yeast, so he will have so the clear. maximum of expression. Riesling represents 22% of the production in our region. And here we have a Grand Cru, 
from the Schoenenbrook single vineyards, which is based in Ricovier. Mm -hmm. And uh, those vines are about 40 to 45 years old. Wow. So obviously, older are the vines, lower is the yield, and more weight complexity you would get into the grapes. This wine could be a great wine to enjoy by its own, but of course we love Riesling with mostly seafood, shellfish, uh, different type of Alsace in cuisine, such as Beckerhofa. I'm very glad to introduce my mother, Bernadette, and today she will prepare for us a Beckerhofa. And by the way, it is a typical Alsace casserole, which is only used to cook this specific recipe, the Beckerhofa. So potatoes, which have been peppered and salted with some carrots, some leeks, then the celery, some onions, some salt, pepper, three different types of meat, beef, pork, and lamb. The three meats have been marinated during 12 hours in a wonderful Pinot Gris from Alsace. And now we put some more vegetables and we recover with some sliced potatoes, marinated juice with the Pinot Gris wine, le bouillon, and we will seal the casserole with some flowers and water. Warm up the oven with a 300 degrees Celsius temperature, around 10, 15 minutes. And then we go down to 250 Celsius and we just have to wait three hours. Et voila, now we are ready to enjoy this tremendous Becca Ofa. And to enjoy this dish, we will also have a wonderful glass of Riesling Reserve 2004. So Riesling is a bone dry wine, very fruity, floral, with a refreshing acidity. And it pairs up very, very well with the Becca Ofa. So let's enjoy our meal and bon appétit. Bon appétit. Cheers. Cheers. We are in the south of Strasbourg on a wonderful place called Chateau du Hut Königsburg. The family Habsburg was the owner of this beautiful castle Chateau du Hut Königsburg in the Middle Age. This castle was used as a very strategic point where the people did a lot of business to go to Paris. The stones of the Chateau du Königsbourg are called Grès des Vosges. It's a special stone, which is this red stone that you mainly find only in Alsace. The workers who did that are the people coming from the villages around this castle. And it took many, many years to rebuild this outstanding castle. We are in Châteaunois, a nice city located in the middle of Alsace, not far away from Château du Hut Königsburg, south of Strasbourg and north of Colmar. Here in Châteaunois, Chervillers, were cities that belonged to the bishops of Strasbourg. In the Middle Age, they had a property called Bishop's Weingarten, which is on our hillside in Châteaunois. And today, we have the chance to produce wine on this Weingarten. Domaine Bernard Heibel is a family domain uh, where we produce wines since many generations. My mother, who was the last winemaker of the domain, she did the wine since 1981. And since now a few years, I follow this tradition. I'm now the winemaker from the domain, uh, with still the help of my mother, of course, because experience is always very important in wine. All the harvest is done manually. We don't use any machine because we want really to have a proper grape coming to the cellar. We press them very slowly, between five and eight hours each press. We use natural yeast, the yeast that are existing on the grapes. When you use this natural yeast, 
the fermentation takes a little bit more time, sometimes five to six days. When we decide to put a Riesling in a wood, it starts the fermentation in wood, and then we don't touch the wine till the end of the fermentation. Those fooders are old fooders. Some of them are about 100 years old, and these fooders don't give any more wood flavor. The advantage of fooder is that, in fact, the wine here gets natural oxygen just to develop the flavors. I have specially uh, prepared for you three top wines from our domain. First one is a Pinot Noir, 2003. It's grapes coming from a special hillside, the Hannenberg, where we have uh, some uh, granite soil, but also some uh, limestone in some parts. And that makes this Pinot Noir special. Nice aromatics of uh, red fruit. You see the nice dark color. If the yield is low, you get much better color. The second one is a very nice Riesling from the Weingarten, and it is uh, fermenting in old oak fooders. And what is interesting always in the fooders is this mix of oxidation that you have that helps the flower to develop much more. We need to wait always three or four years before we can drink this wine. And you will see when you turn the wine in a glass, you see always a color. That's, that means that the, the grapes were really good quality grapes. And to finish a dessert wine, the Pinot Gris Vendange Tardif. The Pinot Gris has some Bolchatis aromatic. We do not have the chance to do every year Vendange Tardif, depending on the weather, on the conditions of the grapes. I can suggest it as an aperitif, or some specific dessert, or even at the end of a meal, if people just want to have a nice glass of wine. Just a few kilometers from the Rhine River is Strasbourg, which considers itself the intellectual and cultural capital of Alsace. And by the way, Strasbourg means city, town, or junction of many streets. And that's an absolutely appropriate name for the city because of its location at the junction of several major roads and canals, which once linked northern Europe with the Mediterranean. Rich in history, the old people's home in Strasbourg, the Hospice de Strasbourg, which was established in 1395, is an unusual example of the life and customs of yesterday. The wine cellars in its medieval basement contain a priceless relic, a barrel that is still filled with wine from the year 1472. Bruno Hertz, president of the Cave Historique des Hospices de Strasbourg, advised us that this wine has been recognized as the oldest example of wine out of a barrel in the world. And it's this extra sec, which is the double of the normal, that we find in this wine. So, this wine from 1472, the oldest wine that is in tonneau in bois. This wine, of course, there are only 300 liters, so it's not at the vent and we don't taste it. Uh, analytiquement, uh, on dirait to support the authenticity of this claim, he produced an official certificate endorsed by government analysts, which also provided a detailed analytic profile of the wine, its structure, and its condition. Originally, Hospice de Strasbourg was established by monks. Its historic cellar not only held their own wines and those which they received in legacy, but stored grain and other products received from pilgrims or the poor as payment for lodgings or medical aid. Today, the Hospice de Strasbourg Association includes 37 qualified wine producer members. Each year, subject to strict quality control, a specially selected wine of each producer is allowed to mature in the oak barrels of the cellar for subsequent release carrying the distinctive logo of the Hospice de Strasbourg, and with it, a guarantee of quality.
The closing days of the Second World War brought tremendous destruction to the vineyards and towns of Alsace. Eggischheim, however, is one of the few towns which escaped the major part of the war's devastation. With its pattern of concentric streets, fountains and half-timber houses, Eggischheim remains one of the traditional gems of Alsace. Winemaking terms, Alsace is divided in two. Bas-Rhin, the Lower Rhine River district around Strasbourg, and Haute-Rhin, Upper Rhine, the general area around Colmar. Egusheim, surrounded by its rolling vineyards, is considered to be the gateway to the Haute-Rhin. Here, vineyards are small, like those of Bruno Hertz, with the average holding just over one hectare, about two and a half acres. And like his own, most have a long history of family ownership through the generations. The harvest scene has hardly changed in 100 years, and in many places the pickers still use the cone-shaped butt to carry the grapes from the vine to the wagon or trailer. <laughs> Although Gewürztraminer and Riesling are the two main grape varieties, Muscat is also widely cultivated, and the wine particularly popular in Central Europe. In Alsace, Kugelhopf is traditionally eaten on Sunday for breakfast, but nowadays it's often served at the conclusion of a meal, as a snack or at afternoon tea accompanied by a glass of muscat. Here, the muscat grape makes a wine totally different from the sweet muscats of Midi. It's full in the nose and yet refreshingly dry. Approximately 15% of all wine production in Alsace is Riesling. However, the only Grand Cru comes from the Rangendetin district, about 40 kilometers from Eggisheim. Originally a volcanic area, the soil has a high mineral content, which gives wine from these vineyards a very distinctive lemony character, excellent acidity and a fullness of flavor which lingers on the palate. This special Riesling goes well with fish, especially salmon, cod or turbot, or it can simply be enjoyed as an aperitif while nibbling salted or come in seed pretzels, another popular Alsatian specialty. surrounded by vineyards and many smaller towns and villages producing wine with a history which goes back several centuries to a time when most growers were laborers or tradesmen from the outlying districts who tended their vines in their spare time, Colmar has grown to become the wine capital of Alsace. is in Bebelheim, just in the middle of Alsace, very close to Colmar. And uh, here by Domaine Botgeil, we produce very special wine. It's a Gewürztraminer coming from the Soinglands. Soinglands is a very chalky place. You find a lot of limestone there, and you he produce some wonderful Gewürztraminer. About 20, 20 producers are doing Soinglands. 
So in Gans, give a very special taste to the Gewurztraminer. It's very intense, but very aromatic, very powerful. But also has stayed very, very delicate and very fine. Here you see some Gewurztraminer batches. It's very aromatic. You have some spice character, you have some lychee character, you have some apricot character, and it's some, some rosa character also. The grapes, as you see, is not very nice looking, but I'm not looking for very nice looking grapes. I just want to make wine with it. Here you see, you have a, a little bit resigning, you have a little bit noberot. Resigning is just dried with the wind and with the sun and give more intense aroma. Noberot, also called Botrytis cinerea, it's a, a mold who takes the water from the berries away and concentrates the flavor, concentrates the acidity and also the sugar. Until recent years, Silvana was the preferred variety, but in the last decade, Gewürztraminer has become the most widely planted grape in Alsace. Jean-Christophe, the proprietor and winemaker, explains that one out of every five vines planted is a Gewürztraminer. The Botgeil Gewürztraminer being enjoyed here was harvested by hand, processed organically, fermented in wood for five months and left to rest on the lees for another six months. When bottled, it's generally around 13.5% alcohol in volume and retains about 30 grams of residual sugar. The resulting wine is considered to have a good structure and a harmonious balance of perfume and flavor, ideally suited as an accompaniment to spicy dishes and strong cheese. Gewürz Traminer at its best. Apart from its wine and generous food, the colorful history of Alsace is no better evident than in its music and its dance. At their regular weekly brass band recital, Les Amis du Ried plays a mixed selection of compositions of both German and French derivation. The Renania Alliance Folkloric Group complement the evening's performances. Costumes and dances are traditional to the Haute-Rhin Departement and include a range of waltzes and polkas. One of the favorites is the wine dance, where couples sweep around the floor as they playfully sip from small wooden barrels of wine. <laughs> Alsace, one of the world's most beautiful vineyards. Its wines, a sublime combination of German raw materials and French know-how. For information on the contents of this show, go to www.winetrailsoffrance.com.